Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I thought I would show you a tutorial where I take these pockets. We got two separate tutorials showing you how to make this three-in-one pocket and the handkerchief pocket and turn it into a journal page. I have some vintage sheet music and a piece of scrapbook paper. And Vintage sheet music sometimes or songbooks are brittle. So I wanted to use this, but it's too thin and I knew it would tear as a journal page. So I'm going to attach it to a scrapbook paper, but I need to trim this down. My journal pages are eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper folded in half. So what I'm going to do first is trim this down to be eight and a half inches tall. And I will save this piece to use somewhere else in my journal. And then I'm going to rotate this around and trim it down to 11 inches wide. Next, I'm going to look at my music and decide which way I want it to be displayed. And I think I want this side glued down. So I'll just use some Aline's Tacky Glue. And I'm not going to glue right at the edge, but close to the edge because I plan to go to the sewing machine. So I'm just going to put a nice bead of glue around the perimeter and kind of ziggy zag it throughout the middle. And I'm putting a very small amount of glue. A lot of people ask me, how do I keep my pages from buckling? And my the glue is really thin. You can barely see it on there. I'm using my bone folder to smooth it out and while I'm waiting on that glue to dry just in case I stray off into the glue I'll use my distress ink walnut stain and go around the edges I noticed that I got off just a little bit here so I'm just going to trim away that excess paper all right so I've got those two glued together so now what I want to do is go to my sewing machine and stitch around this outside edge okay so I'm over at my sewing machine I have a regular machine I'm using a regular needle regular thread I've, I use black thread in my machine because I like the way it stands out I'm using a new thread because I found that if I use a thread that's really old it's brittle and it breaks I do recommend that you wait for your paper to dry if you're gluing things together before you sew on it. So I'm just going to pop this in here and start sewing. I'm using a zigzag stitch. When I get to the edge of the page, I will put my needle down to where it's in the rightmost position. Then I'll raise my presser foot and rotate my project and then put the presser foot back down and continue sewing. You can see the corners there, how nice and neat they are. All right, we're done sewing. Now that it is sewn and the glue should be pretty much dry, I'll go ahead and fold this in half. I like to make my journal pages flat. If you've been following me, you might have noticed that. But if you're new, hey, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And if you're new and you didn't know, I like to create my journal pages flat and then put them together in my journal. All right, now that I've got that folded so I know where my center mark is, let's go ahead and grab our pocket pieces. And I think I want to put one of the pockets on this side and we'll put this pocket over here. So I'll just use my Aline's Tacky Glue and I will use the tabs that I created on my pockets to glue it in place. And I want to make sure that I'm not into the fold. So try to make sure you go just to the side of it. And we'll do the same thing on this pocket. Give that a moment to dry. My journal card is a combination of scrapbook paper and images from Calco Collage. This is her new Bridal Farms journal kit that she has. And these are some horse phrases that she has in her shop. So that fits down in there. And then over here, I have a mason jar that she has added to horses. And then this is rubber stamps on uh, watercolor paper. And then in the background, stamping on a book page, another rubber stamp. This is a comb flower and beauty is soul deep. Those are both in my shop. 
And then in the front here is Norella's little uh, Polaroid type images with horses. And then I made a bookmark size journal tag. All right, so I'm going to flip this over. And on this side, I want to add some writing space. The journal page is kind of bulky, so I don't want to add any more pockets, but I want to be able to have some writing space on this hide. So I'm going to set this aside. I've got a couple of these tear-off notebook papers. Now, if you don't have this type of paper, you can grab some notebook paper or some copy paper. Remember, you can dye it with Kool-Aid. You can use tea. You can use Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. Don't think that you're limited by just a plain sheet of paper. You can alter it. All right, so what I want to do is stamp on here. I have the... I think it's called twirling or curling. I can't remember. Twirling ribbon border. And I liked it because it kind of reminded me of a barbed wire. And I wanted something small. So kind of country feeling is what I thought. So I'm going to stamp it using the archival jet black ink. And remember when you're stamping, press firmly, evenly, do not rock, let it sit on your paper so that the ink can transfer. So I'm going to flip this around so it's closer to me. And I'll do all four sides and then I'll repeat this on the second piece of paper. All right, so there's one. Let's do it one more time. All right, so I got those put together. I have a scrap of a book page here, and I have a rubber stamp, and I think this was horse on the fence, or horse fence, I can't remember, but I'll have a link in the description box below, and you can also check out my blog. So I'm going to ink this up. Now this ink, has, this stamp has more of a solid area, so I need to kind of press it into the ink pad a few times in different directions so that it gets full coverage. Can you see that? And then I want to stamp it in the text, but I want to leave a little bit of a border all the way around. So I'm just going to move it up just a little bit. And again, press firmly, evenly, don't rock it. Got my little Fisker scissors. And I am going to, I'm going to cut off part of the landscape here and then fussy cut this out. I'm going to apply some distress ink to the edges. I have some scrapbook paper. It was a scrap that I had here on my desk. Now, of course, this looks like woven burlap. You could also use a grocery sack, maybe a paper sack. I'm going to glue this to the brown. So I'm leaving a little bit of a border around the edges. And then I will fussy cut this out, but I want to make sure that it has a nice brown border. And then I'll apply some distress inks to this piece. I have a scrap. This is where I trimmed down the music page and I had a little scrap left over. So I've got the stamp Horses Keep Me Stable. So I'm going to stamp that on this little strip. That's why I like rubber stamps because I can use all these little bits and pieces. Sure, if you have a computer and you have a printer, you can print, but then you wouldn't be able to print on these little bitty pieces of paper. I'm going to put some distress ink around the edge of this piece. Now, sometimes the pieces are fragile and they're flimsy and it's hard to hang on to. So I've just got an old gift card and I've put that behind it to kind of give it a little bit of stabilization. So I can add some distress ink to the edges. I have a piece of fabric here. And I think what I want to do is I don't want that full width and or length, I mean, of it. So I'm going to trim it just a little bit longer. And I'll fold this in half and then just cut it. This was a one inch wide piece of fabric. And I tear it usually. So one edge is kind of frayed looking. So what I'll do is just grab a couple of fibers on the other side until I can fray it. So it's got a little bit of a frayed edge on it now. 
glue this piece on top. All right, so I'm building all my little components here that I want to use. One more, I have another strip scrap of paper, and I've got the horse. I think this is from the, what is this? Uh, mare, stallion, colt, and horse. It's a little set of four words. So I'll stamp that in here and then trim it. Use some distress inks on it. And then I've got a different piece of fabric because, you know, we got to have variety, right? And I will glue this down. Again, this is a one inch wide strip that is the length of the uh, fabric is when I tear them. So now I've got that component, this other way. And then I've got one of the fussy cut elements from the Bridal Farms kit. And then I have the word diary. This is a set of journal and diary words. And I think there's a few blank labels that Norella of Calco Collage has. And I was finding that I was using all the journal ones, but not the diary. So I thought I'm going to use this today. All right. So let's start with one side. So I'll grab one of the stamped papers and I've got the little horse head and I want to position this so that the horse head is kind of up in this corner. And sometimes it's difficult to get the right placement of where you want to put this piece of paper so it's not too high or too low. So I will kind of position it where I think I want it, leave it there for a moment, and then I will add some glue. I know this portion will be on that blue piece of paper. So then I can come back in here and make a few little adjustments. Okay, that looks good. And then what I'll do is kind of peel this back a little bit. And then I'll put glue on the whole piece. Position it where I want it. All right, so I've got the word horse. I want to put that right here. And then we're going to use the word diary and place it down here. Robin of my administrative team on the Friendly Junk Journal people is always on me about adding bling to my journals. Just trying to find this isn't the right size. Where did it go? So I've got this little flat back gem. If I can get it peeled off the backer. There we go. And I want to put it on the bridle. Kind of reminds me of a, a cabochon, cab cabanch. I forgot how you call those, but I think that looks pretty cute. All right, so we're going to flip this over to the other side. And over here, what I want to do is glue down this piece in the center at the top. I'll glue this below. Hey, if you haven't gone over to visit the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group, please do. I'd love to have you come hang out with us. Share what you're working on. You can share your video posts there once every 24 hours. You can just ask questions. You can post a picture, say, hey, what do I do here? Or what do you think of this? And we'll give you some feedback. All right, we'll do that there. I left a little bit of a gap here. I'll show you why in a moment. And then I've got horses keep me stable. I'll put that at the bottom. There at the bottom. And then I decided again, because of Robin of my administrative team wants me to use more bling. So I'm going to trim this. It's kind of a strip. And it's something that I've had for a long time. I was even surprised that it was still sticky. And we're going to lay that underneath here. My husband said, oh, it's kind of like a rhinestone cowboy or cowgirl. <laughs> Trying to get that positioned. I think I got one extra. And then there is my journal page complete. So know that even if you are working in a ready-made journal, another technique you could do is do sewing on a piece of paper and then glue it into your journal if you want. And so it's kind of fun to be able to do that. I like the way this one turned out. And of course, then this is the other side where you can still see the music. You get that vintage feel if you like that vintage feel, but we also added some color.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit that notification bell at the top. Lastly, let me know what you thought of this project. What was your favorite part or how are you inspired, if you are, by creating your own? All right, everybody. No, I'll go live or I have a prime a premiere live video on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time and then sprinkled in between throughout the weeks I have other tutorials and then go back and check some of my old tutorials you'd be really surprised how I've made my tutorials where even if it's a product that I use a long time ago you should be able to figure it out now all right thanks again for watching bye everybody